Welcome to this edition of the Commissioner's Report. I'm your host, Tricia Pichette, and with me today from District 3 is Commissioner Bill Braswell. Happy to be here. I was lucky enough to be able to attend with you a town hall meeting that you set up right. in the neighborhood of Inwood. Right, right. For those who don't know, Inwood is in your district, but where is it? It's, it's just on the outside of uh, Winter Haven, okay. and it's a, a heavily urbanized area and uh, you know, a lot of density there and uh, it's, it's, it's been an area that's had some issues over the years and uh, the people there reached out to me and we had a town hall and I think it went pretty good. It, it did, it certainly did, but that's one of the interesting things about the Inwood area. They do have a neighborhood association who's very right. active. They're active, uh, they get a lot done, uh, they bring their problems to us so we can look at this and how we can solve them and it works out uh, good in both ways. Um, but you know, it's it's like anything else. It's uh, there's more need than than we can uh, handle there. But but we're working on it. Well, we, you certainly are, and and the the neighborhood really felt as though um, they mattered and sure. that people were there to listen. Uh, the first speaker that night was Sheriff Grady Judd, and he had some good news. Yeah, he's always he's a good draw. He brings the crowd in and uh, I asked him to, to open up for us and basically what he was there to talk about is the the police presence we have a substation that we located in Inwood uh, back when there was a lot more uh, uh, crime issues going on there and he just basically kind of walked through how we got there with a the substation and, and what they're doing to crack down on crime mm -hmm. and it was good news not only for Inwood but for Polk County the crime is down yeah yeah well crime yeah crime is down everywhere uh, but uh, that area particularly had some pretty bad drug crime and stuff like that in the past. Uh, they've really cracked down on that and kind of cleaned it up. Yeah. One of the nice things to see was they, let's see, Major Monroe was right, there, right. Captain Horstman was there, um, and people knew them. Sure, and, sure. And were talking to them on a first name basis. Well, the Neighborhood Association uh, has a night out with the deputies once a month. Oh. And they, 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 it's like a potluck thing. They bring their uh, dishes in, the deputies show up, and, uh, you know, their, their schedules are, uh, you know, they, they pop in during the meeting when they can, and they go fight crime when they're not doing that. But um, so the, the neighborhood knows them. They know all the deputies. Um, the deputies know them. They know where the trouble uh, spots are. Uh, like, like you saw, the people are vocal there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, what I always tell them. I mean, we don't know your problems unless you tell us about them. And, and they're, they're quick to do that. But you, you really got the sense of community policing. They, they knew who they were. <coughs> they weren't afraid to, to talk with them. It, it was nice to see. And they're not afraid to call them out. You know, yeah. if, if, they, if they see an issue that uh, they don't feel is getting resolved, uh, they're quick to call them out and they're quick to call me and they're quick to uh, let us know that we're not doing what we said we we're going to do. Yeah. And that's okay. I mean, that's, that's what we're here for. You know, I mean, there's a lot of other issues besides crime. There's, it's, it's a low area, so there's drainage issues. Um, um, you know, it's, like I said, an urban area, so it's densely populated. So there's, uh, the county's provided parks for them over there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's a, you know, I can remember when I was a kid growing up, Inwood was like this kind of quiet little, uh, Florida neighborhood that you know was, uh, everybody moved there to raise their family and it was you know you had everybody got together and then it, it went away from that for many years and uh, but but it, you know it's, it's coming back together and, and I think it's going really well. It is and um, one of the interesting things about this meeting was the fact that there were so many senior level managers there from the county. I mean, you, you mentioned uh, roads and drainage. Jay sure. Jarvis was there. Sure, sure. He, was, he was there to talk, but more importantly, he was there to listen. Yeah, I had uh, talked to Mr. Beasley about bringing in all the department heads um, because it, it, you could cut through the red tape that way. You could go, okay, I have this problem, and you're the guy at the top of the ladder here to fix it. And, and, and that's how you get things done. And so it works out really well. And we had all the department heads there. We also had the Department of Health there. They were giving out free flu shots. Yep. Uh, Lori Edwards' office was there registering voters. Um, you know, it was a good turnout, and, and it was, a, it, it was a, an event that you could get something done at. Absolutely. Um, I, Jeff Spence was there from Parks right. and Recreation. Uh, I was really <coughs> surprised to learn that as an urban neighborhood, Inwood was closer to more parks 
than any other area in Polk County. Yeah, um, the counties put a lot of money in parks there. I believe there are six right, not necessarily in Inwood, but on the periphery of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's taking a lot of money. The Lake Blue um, sidewalk that goes walking area around the lake, that was the most recent one. And, you know, aside from being there to listen to what the, the, the citizens uh, think we're not doing or, or want more of, you know, the part of the meeting was to let them know what we have done. You know, we've, we've put a lot of money in resurfacing streets there. Uh, I don't remember the exact figure, but I think it's something like eight or ten million dollars just resurfacing. Um, there's a real need for sidewalks there. And um, it was when I when I started the whole idea of this meeting, talking with uh, Mr. Beasley, it was really interesting. They've had a, a plan to kind of bring the two uh, most densely populated areas and where the schools are together with sidewalks meeting in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's an expensive thing to do. Uh, it's a process. We, we've been building sidewalks there every year and it's going to take time, but eventually the network of sidewalks will be there. I, I like the cooperation there is between departments <coughs> too because with the Polk Transportation Planning Organization, they're talking with roads and drainage as sure. well. Um, and their complete streets program is, as you said, trying to make sure that there are sidewalks around the schools, around the parks, where they're needed. Yeah, so. well, I mean, there was a time when roads were built just to move cars from point A to point B. Now people realize uh, there's other means of transportation, bikes, walking, people are more health conscious. But, but more importantly, you know, when you just have these streets and everybody blasts in and blasts out, you lose that sense of neighborhood. Now, when they come back with the complete streets, you know, it's, it's prettier. Uh, you can walk, you can ride a bike, you can enjoy yourself. Uh, you know, it gives people other opportunities. And it's, it's, a, it's a great concept. Um, until I, I, really, until I became a county commissioner, I'd really never heard of it before. Uh, you know, they do a lot of it over in Lakeland. And, you know, Polk County, where we can, we'll do it. One of the other departments that was there was um, code enforcement. Sure. And that was one of the, the more vocal sections. Uh, people wanted to know um, what was reportable, how right. they would report it. It was interesting as well. Well, one of uh, the major issues with Inwood are a lot of the homes are rental homes. Now, when people don't own a home, they don't necessarily put that much into it. They don't necessarily care how it looks. They don't care what they leave in the yard. The people who live there, the residents uh, who own their homes, you know, they, they take pride in their neighborhood, they take pride in their home, and it bothers them that they have to drive by some junky house to get to their house. So code enforcement is probably an Inwood every day, um, and that's, again, it's probably because of uh, the rental homes, but it's, but it's great to see a neighborhood that invites code enforcement in as opposed to the opposite, you know, stay out, we want to keep it junky or whatever. They don't want that. They mm -hmm. want it cleaned up. They want it looking nice, um, and they want to enjoy their neighborhood, and, and that's what code enforcement's there for. Um, I thought the, the Autumn did a great job explaining how code enforcement works because that's been a lesson for me. <clears throat> um, it's not just a matter of going in there and say, clean it up. There's a process, uh, and if we get to the end of that process and they don't clean it up, we'll clean it up for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Well, it, it was nice also, uh, again, going back to the Sheriff's Department when, when, when Autumn spoke and sp spoke about what code enforcement does and when they should be called, it was nice to see the Sheriff's Department stand up and say, but if you know there's a problem yeah. in and around this house, please let us know. Well, and it, you know, it becomes a safety issue for the, mm -hmm. for the, for the county. I mean, we're, we don't want to send somebody in there and uh, something bad happen. Uh, that's what the sheriff's job is there for, to, to, to keep bad things from happening. Mm -hmm. And so we use them. Um, and, you know, the, the deputies that were there, they encouraged uh, the people of Inwood to call them direct, uh, you know, with, with whatever the issues are, whether it's code enforcement or... Uh, I know when I was just standing there, a guy walked up and he said, here's an address of a drug house. What can you do about it? Mm -hmm. and, and I guarantee you, Grady Judd will do something about it. Yep. Without question. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for setting up this, that sure. town hall meeting. It was it was a little mini mini civics lesson for me. That's right. for sure. Right.
and um, it, it's nice to see a neighborhood that has has pride sure. and they care about each other and um, they want to see it get better. Yeah, uh, Inwood's a, 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 an in progress uh, neighborhood. Uh, I think it's getting better every year. Uh, like you said, the people are they, they care. They want to see it get better, and uh, we want to help them do it. That's terrific. Well, we'll be right back for more of the Commissioner's Report. Stay tuned. Hello. Hi. I'm from Blue Hood Stone Barns. We brought a meal Thank for you. you, and I'm here to serve it to you. Okay, great. Come in. Zucchini carbonara, made from zucchini that was harvested earlier this morning. Again? Oh. <laughs> hey, Dan Barber. You have room for a little bit more? <laughs> come, yeah, on come on in. Brochettes, the sausage. So when we made that zucchini carbonara, you know, they're the end pieces of the zucchini, and they're the cores that we cut away, not to mention zucchini flour. Usually those get thrown out. We use them to create an entire second dish. Does that, oh. Again? Uh. I'm here to bring you your third course. It's the vines from your zucchini. We'll have a little zucchini stem pasta. A different experience of zucchini. When we start to think differently about our food, we can get a lot more out of it. This is delicious. What do you think we can make out of this? 40% of food in America is never eaten. Cook it, store it, share it. Visit savethefood.com. Are we there yet? Yep. We're here. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Have you considered starting a small business? Is entrepreneurship your transition mission? Veterans own nearly one in 10 of all U.S. small businesses, and business ownership can be a rewarding career for military spouses. Boots to Business, the entrepreneurship track of the Transition Assistance Program, will teach you skills to succeed in business ownership. This program is free and available on installations worldwide. Service members and spouses may attend the Boots to Business program at any time prior to their transition. If your future career plan needs a business plan, then start now. Planning ahead ensures a successful transition. So what are you waiting for? Connect with the transition office on your military installation to sign up for the Boots to Business program today. Attracting businesses, keeping them, and getting them to expand operations often prompts local governments to consider offering tax incentives. While some people like to call this corporate welfare, local governments do not simply give away money to corporations in these deals. The expected benefits are weighed carefully against expected costs to determine whether tax incentives would be mutually beneficial. This is a hot topic in Polk County right now, and Commissioner Braswell is back with us to discuss it. Joining him is Sean Malott, President and CEO of the Central Florida Development Council. Welcome, gentlemen. It's great to be here. Great to be here. Now this is a, a hot topic, so sure. let's dive right in, shall sure, we? Sure, sure. sure. Well, um, and, and just what you said is what makes it hot. People think it's uh, corporate welfare, we're giving away tax dollars, and it's just the opposite. And, and it, you know, it, it, it's for the benefit of the community. Um, I think we do a very good job. Unfortunately, we get compared to some of these uh, other cities, counties, states that have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on one job, and, and that's just not what we do here in Polk County. Sean is here, and tell us a little bit about you, Sean. Yeah, hi, Sean Malott, uh, President of Central Florida <coughs> Development Council. Uh, really, you know, our organization is focused on attracting business to Polk County, mm -hmm. and also helping businesses grow and and be <coughs> successful here in Polk. And I I become offended when I hear the word you know corporate welfare because really that is it, it's a term that's used to just make the public angry. About, about incentivizing and bringing companies to our, to our community. And really, you know, the, the world is a very competitive place. There are a lot of really wonderful places a business c can go and can expand. And really the way I look at it is when we talk about incentive dollars, it's really about investing in our community. You know, our, benef you know, our businesses benefit, but yet really it's the community that benefits because these jobs are, are, you know, are happening within our community. And we have really kind of two types of programs that are available um, within Polk County. One is a, a, a tax rebate program where a company has to be a taxpayer 
you know, to be able to pay into the system, to be able to get money back. So if they're not here in Polk County, they can't be a they can't be a taxpayer. You know, if they're located somewhere else, you know, there's no benefit that our community is is deriving. So by having them here and being a taxpayer, they're helping you know, provide the services or you know really help you know pay for the services within the community and and also create jobs and you know salaries. And the other is a tax abatement which kind of works the similar way, except that they are, again, have to be here, have to be located here, and then we're abating some of the taxes that they're pay. You know, typically there's an emphasis is on what they're not paying, but in most cases they're paying far more than what they are not paying. Um, but it's very confusing. You know, incentives can be confusing to the general public, especially if, you know, if it's not reported properly or, or, or if you're not necessarily looking into the details, um, because really most of these um, projects are large scale, um, high capital wage or high capital investment type projects that are coming here that are making a big benefit and we're focused on the those big projects that are coming to the community but but also you know we're looking at policy that is beneficial for all businesses um, you know whether you're new to the to the area or or existing business you're looking to make sure that really Polk is the most competitive place uh, to be so that a company can be successful and, and employ people in, in our environment here. So it's, you know, we're in a, a time where there's a lot of growth happening in Polk County. Um, there's a lot of growth happening throughout Central Florida. You know, we're at the geographic center of Polk County and it's really a, a, an opportunity for us to benefit um, by the growth that's happening in Tampa and Orlando. You know, we're a really wonderful community, a, a, a great place to locate. And you know, we want every company that's out there that's thinking about a location to do business, that we want them to think about Polk County. And kind of taking us back, incentives are one of the tools you know, to be able to help a company be successful here. And you know, most of our incentives are at the front end. Um, so they become you know, part of our business community here. And you know, we hope that they find a great you know, quality of life and everything looking for, that they're here far longer you know, once their incentive dollars have, have run out. And in, in most cases, it's just a cherry on top, you know, to be able to help them with their decision. You know, number one reason we want them here is because they think it's the right place, because we have the right talent, the right workforce, you know, maybe the supplies that they need are in our market. Um, that's why we want them to choose. And the incentives are just a tiny little part of the deal to help push them over the edge. And, and, and the key word here is choose, because they do have a choice. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, right now we've got a company that we're trying to entice to come to Polk County. Uh, they're looking at a much higher incentive package somewhere else. But, you know, they probably, you know, the location here is really good. But sometimes you need something to get them over the edge to, to, to pick Polk County. And that's what we're hoping to do. And these incentives aren't a one-size-fits-all. You actually look at every single opportunity separately. We're, we're not just... Right, it's, it's all based upon the number of jobs being created and the capital investment to what they're investing in the facility. Um, so you have to be creating jobs to qualify and to, to for the, you know, basically to receive the benefit, you, we go through a performance process as well where you, we have to go through and we verify that they've done what they said they're gonna do. You know, Florida and specifically Polk County, you know, is all through, you know, tax incentives. Now, there are other states out there that may be willing to offer a check when they come to the door, but that's not what we have here. You know, we don't have that type of incentive program in which in some ways can be a disadvantage because some companies are expecting that, um, but that's not what we have. So really, it, it, in essence, we have a, a tool set that we work, um, that we really promote you know, about being in the right location. Um, you know, it, some of the projects that we've competed for, we're competing with other, other states in the southeast and a lot of the large projects come to the southeast because some of our competing states are willing to offer, you know, cash right out of the gate. But we don't have that in Polk County. We don't have that in Florida. Uh, so therefore, you know, in, in some places they look at that as a disadvantage. Um, but we look at it as we work with the programs that we have, we use the tools that we have, and hopefully they need you know, to be here in this market or want to be here in this market because of our, you know, our, our friendly business climate. You know, we're a low tax state. Um, you know, again, we have beautiful sunshine outside. You know, we, of course, you know, I, I believe we're <coughs> the best place you know, to, to be regardless. Um, but we have to convince that uh, you know, from a business standpoint as well. And we've, we've had some really good successes in the logistics 
um, and supply chain area. We've had some really great successes from manufacturing. We've had good success from business services and others. Um, but we want to have even more of those. You know, we want that. We want Polk to be a you know a flourishing economy where everybody that you know resides in Polk could also work in Polk and have a you know have a, a really abundant life here in, in Polk County. So we want to see all of Polk prosper. And I think it's important. The one that's come to light recently has been dubbed uh, Project Rotag, and what this offers uh, Polk County. Uh, uh, if they move here, and, and it's not a done deal by any stretch right now, but they'll come in here and spend $20 million on a piece of land. They're going to spend $230 million building their um, uh, business. They're going to hire at least 250 people. The average wage is almost $70,000. $70,000 is a lot of money in Polk County. It's almost 200% our average annual wage here. On top of the fact that it's a full <coughs> benefit package that goes along with that with medical and dental and all those kind of things that you want with a job. Mm -hmm. And then when it's all done, the payroll is about $17 million right out of the gate. Well, that money's going to come back into Polk County. It's a lot of money. Yeah. And, and so here we are, this particular project, the ground that they want to build on, is paying about seven thousand dollars of property right. tax right now um, so let's take that 10 years seventy thousand dollars now that's not a drop in the bucket but it's a drop in the bucket for what we're talking about if they come in we we abate what one and a half million about dollars one and a half million dollars in property taxes for 10 years people don't understand yes the property taxes are going away but the school taxes the mstu taxes will still be paid so they're going to pay into the school board over a million and a half dollars Polk County needs that money, and it's good. And on top of the fact, we need those good jobs. You know, it's what Sean alluded to on the logistics. You know, we've built a lot of warehouses, and a lot of people, you know, are like, we need something else. We need something else. This is something else, and it's a really good opportunity. And again, the company, you know, there's a lot of things that go in making that decision where they're going to go. Florida has, and especially Polk County, like Sean said, we're right in the middle. We got the great weather, no income tax. Um, you know, we're hoping that just they need this little bit of help to get over the hump and relocate here, or not relocate, add another company here in uh, Polk County. Yeah, and this will be an advanced <coughs> manufacturing project. Um, really, they're you know out of the gate investing 230 million dollars. Again, this facility we we'll see will be here for for years to come, and will continue to invest and continue to hire people. Um, you know, like like we talked about, those incentives go away, but that facility will still be here and they will be you know, continuing to employ people and really kind of raise the, the standard of what's available in Polk. And it's, it's job opportunities that will be available here where people aren't you know, commuting outside of the market. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's one of our advantages because we can commute outside of our market. It's also one of our advantages <coughs> that people can commute in. But really, we want people to you know, have, have best opportunities they can in their own backyard. And this is a real opportunity. Like, Commissioner Braswell said it's it's still you know not a done deal at this point. You know I, I don't feel comfortable until a, a company announces it to their shareholders, and starts digging dirt, and we start seeing a facility come out of the out of the ground. But really, this the the commission here in Polk County has really worked hard to try to make this project happen. Has been very willing to work with this company so that they see that Polk County is the right place to be. And I think that they've they they get that, and we just want them to make that that decision to be here in Polk County. And how this works, I mean, uh, the new um, Amazons relocate, or not relocating, building a new headquarters. Some cities on the East Coast are offering $2 billion in abatements and tax incentives. Wow. $2 billion. We can't afford that. So we, we're, that's off the table for Polk County. Um, but, but that's the kind of competition we have out there for these uh, sort of projects. And, you know, people are running a lot of people, so we don't need more business coming here. Well, that's great if you've got a job and your life is secure and everything's great in your life. But there are people out here who need jobs, uh, they have skills, and, and, and the reality is when you buy property in Florida, you have certain rights. And if you buy property and you want to build a business here, you can do that. You know, we're not, we're not in the business of turning businesses away. So, so, so the growth is coming. We can either manage it or it can manage us. And we look at it, this is a good opportunity to, to get the right kind of company in here, paying the right kind of wages with the right kind of benefits, and everybody's going to benefit out of it. Right, and they, you know, I even you know, add to that to say there are more people moving here just naturally through you know moving to this market because it's a great place to be that we need the job growth to keep up. You know, we have more population growth than we do with job growth. Um, Percentage-wise, we look great, but when you when you look at the number of people that are moving to our area, 
you know, we need to continue to, you know, to promote uh, the, you know, the, the quality of business standards here in our, our community to be able to increase those job opportunities that are located here because we are growing. You know, really, Central Florida is growing significantly. Polk County is going to grow by about 40% over the next 15 years. <laughs> we have a significant amount of, of economic development happening just by population growth. But we need our businesses you know, to, to grow and, and be prosperous to be able to, to keep up and to, you know, to really allow our, our citizens to have a high quality of life. And this will come up in the future quite a bit, I, I, at least I think so, because we now have Florida Poly. We have opportunities we, we never had before. We have sun tracks. Some of these high-tech things, um, we're not, uh, you know, we haven't attracted these high-tech companies, but, you know, we, we may be at that point right now. And if it's this little bit of money that tips them over to, to come to Polk County, that's what we want to do. And, it, and I think it's money well spent. It's what, 7000 per employee? Is Correct. The, right. It's about $7,000 per employee. For, uh, for this one company that we're talking about. But you know, people read about some of these uh, uh, other other counties, cities, you know, it's 100,000 per job, 200,000 or even 50,000. That's just simply not gonna happen here in Polk County. Number one, we just can't afford it. But number two, uh, what we do spend, I think it's, I mean, I'm a small businessman. I understand return on investment. It's a real good return on our investment. Yeah, yeah and these are programs that are available to existing businesses as well. You know, if, if they are you know, creating the, the, the job numbers to qualify the programs, we want to talk to those businesses as well. So if there are folks watching today that have a business in Polk and that are looking to, you know, to grow and be successful here, we want to talk to those folks as well. You know, oftentimes we hear about the new businesses coming in town, but really last year of the number of projects that we worked, um, the majority of them were existing businesses, some of our larger employers that you know, chose to expand here in Polk you know, instead of some other location. So we want to help all businesses, no matter what size they are, be successful here in Polk. And that's when we talk about like the business advocacy piece. You know, so much so that you know we we want our companies to to know that there are groups out there that are looking for their you know looking out for their their interests, so that they can make um, decisions that equal you know again opportunities to hire more people. And the way we and the, the way we've gotten to where we are. Uh, these companies are out looking and they go to Enterprise Florida, is that where it usually starts? Well, Enterprise Florida is our state agency, so right. our state economic development group is Enterprise Florida and a company that's, say, a Fortune 500 company that's looking to come to Florida, there's a good chance they're going to read out, reach out to our, 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 Enterprise, our state economic development agency, which is Enterprise mm -hmm. Florida, and then at that point, they may talk about where they want to be, whether it's in Central Florida or North Florida or South Florida, and then Enterprise Florida really tries to cast the largest net possible um, and pull in groups that can be able to help. And the Central Florida Development Council is that group in, in Polk County, and therefore, and then we work with our, you know, our, our municipal economic development agencies to find you know, you know, really locations that will be a good opportunity for those businesses to, to locate. But the other thing about CFDC is it's not just government people involved. It's private enterprise, Correct. private businesses. I think everybody on the board is, has a business right. or has their own business. These are people who, who understand business. They know what businesses are looking for, what's going to bring them here. And um, it works really well. I think it works great here in Polk County. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's, it's an economic development partnership. You know, it's a partnership with, with our county and also private business to be able to work together to be able to you know, really be an advocate for businesses, you know, wherever they might be within, within Polk County. Um, but really looking, yeah, for uh, you know, the, the opportunity to kind of tweak the system to be able to make it better. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. While tax incentives are an important reason for businesses to choose to locate to this area, they're not the only reason. Businesses also consider non-financial factors in these decisions, like location, political climate, housing prices, education, parks, and the arts. Polk County is not only a great place to live and to work, it's also a great place to do business. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the Commissioner's Report.